Here's a concert hall swing mate mono record player from the late 70s on a little stand. Uses a two speed BSR turntable. This is likely one of the last monophonic automatic record players that was ever made. And of course, the BSR turntable is frozen solid along with all the levers. No surprise there. So let's take it in here and see if we can get it freed up and get it working again. Now the first order of business is to get the platter removed and to do that quickly we'll use our hot soldering iron technique. We've already removed the center clip from the turntable. And I will just take the hot soldering iron hold it right there for a few minutes and then that should loosen the grease up enough for the turntable platter to lift off. You want to use just as little amount of heat as necessary to get the job done. You don't want to melt this plastic turntable platter. And I also added a couple of drops of Zoom Spout Oil to help to help the uh, process along a little bit, make it a little easier. Okay, a few minutes of heat, got it loose enough that maybe we can lift it off now. And this cycling cam gear is also frozen, solid as a rock, so we'll use the same method on it. Pop the little clip off, apply heat from the soldering iron for a few minutes until it frees up. And now we're applying the hot soldering iron to the cycling gear. Hold it on there a few minutes and it should break free. You don't want to use force on these BSR record changers because they are a little bit on the cheaply built side. Now they're reliable once they're cleaned and lubricated and working properly, but they're not going to take a whole lot of abuse. And I've seen many of these changers ruined where the platter would freeze up and people would try to force them and they would end up destroying the mechanism. So, you know, you don't want to do that. And there you go. It's amazing what a little heat will do. Now we have to clean all this mess up and then re-lubricate it. And here are all our washers and our ball bearing assembly removed from the center spindle. All of that is going to have to be cleaned and re-lubricated. And for cleaning we use just standard contact cleaner or rubbing alcohol. Both of those products usually do a pretty good job. Uh, the contact cleaner works best for more aggressive cleaning. Okay, we're cleaning off the grease and gunk from the cycling gear. And I need to bring up a point that a lot of people overlook. They forget about this little lever deal here that activates the auto mechanism. It gets dried up with grease just like the rest of the mechanism and it doesn't move freely. So you want to pop this little clip off here and remove this part of the cycling gear assembly. Clean it up real good with the contact cleaner and re-lubricate it just like we do the rest of the mechanism. And here it is removed. I actually had to use a little heat from the soldering iron to get this off. It was this it was that stubborn. And there we go, nice and freed up. And for those who haven't seen my previous videos, I like to use these products for lubrication. This white lithium grease as well as the zoom spout oil. I mainly use the zoom spout on the motor. However, on many surfaces that require this stuff, I like to follow it up with a drop of this stuff. Like I said in a previous video, that's just me. I just like doing it that way. I like to be different. Okay, we have the cycling gear all lubricated and put back together and that turns freely like it's supposed to. We also have the spindle bearing cleaned and lubricated. Now we have to deal with these stuck function levers as well as take the motor out and lubricate it. And to do that we'll have to remove the turntable, the record changer assembly, and that's accomplished by removing this screw and this screw and then the whole thing should just lift out. And here we are. Now this is one of those models that has a separate winding on the motor to 
to provide a low AC voltage to the little amplifier module here, which is not much to it, obviously. I think it's a little four transistor job. And there's the speaker laying inside the cabinet because the mounting studs have broken. But that shouldn't be too hard to fix. I can glue that back in place. And it's obvious by the electrical tape on the wires leading up to the amplifier that someone has already already worked on this at some point in time and guess what I'm about to uh, break their connection again because it'll be a lot easier to work on this changer with it separated from the rest of the unit and I can tell by the brittleness of the tape that this was done a long time ago and as you can see they didn't even solder the wires when I put it back together I'll solder the wires and use heat shrink tubing and here's the amp actually it's a little five transistor job not much to it, but should get the job done. While we have this out, let's go ahead and spray the volume control with control cleaner because you know it's going to need it. And I see on the power input to the amplifier that you can see the sloppy soldering here and whatever whoever doofus worked on this thing before me uh, got solder bridged across the input connections for the power, which means they placed a short circuit across the uh, secondary winding of the motor aka power transformer for the amp so I hope they didn't burn out the winding on the power transformer aka motor since the motor serves dual purpose here okay we have our power wires resoldered with no shorts this time let's just hope it all works when we put it all back together well I have the amplifier back in place but I decided to do a do a random test of the speaker voice call and it's wide open so that's not good so now we're going to have to find a speaker that we can make fit in this thing okay the closest thing I could find was this old TV speaker you see black plastic crap TV sets are good for something and even though it wasn't an exact fit I was able to do a little drilling and a little bending and a little breaking off of unneeded mounts and it will fit on the uh, remaining two speaker studs that are mounting studs that are not broken. So now all I have to do is attach this some way, and that part should be good to go. I'm starting to think this record player is going to have everything wrong with it that, that, that can go wrong. In fact, most other people would have already slung it in a dumpster by now. Okay, I have our levers unstuck. So let's put this thing back together and kind of get a progress report on where we are right now. Okay, well we were, we were totally dead, apparently, because we have an intermittent connection here at the power plug. What I said might be true about everything that can go wrong with this going wrong. Okay, we have power, but no rotation, and no action from the cartridge. Let's see if it's the amp or the car. Okay, we're getting a little buzz from the amp input, but not as much as I think it should be. Of course, this thing uses a 3-volt cartridge, so you may not get much buzz out of it with me just touching the input. Okay, this cartridge is dead as a doornail. I tested it on my little realistic test amplifier there and it is completely dead. This is a BSR X5H which I've already looked up. It's a 3 volt crystal cartridge and I think they're about 28 bucks a pop. Now I'm gonna have to make a decision. This thing already has numerous other problems that I've yet to fix. Do I want to spend 28 dollars on this cheap record player, or do I just want to part it out? I'm going to have to sleep on that tonight. I will, however, do a little more troubleshooting with the amplifier, because even though, even if it is designed for a 3 volt signal, I think it should provide a little bit more buzz than what it's providing whenever I touch my finger to it, so we'll check that out, and if it's determined that I can fix the amp and drive it with a lower output cartridge then we may go with it but otherwise 
this thing is probably going to go to the graveyard. Okay, uh, it seems the amplifier is okay. Uh, I'm not finding anything wrong with it. I th think it's a little puny amp that requires the weight of the world to get any kind of drive out of it or any kind of gain out of it. So, I think we are, unless I can find one of these cartridges very cheap, I think I'm going to have to make a painful decision on this thing. And no, I haven't slept on it yet. I tell you what, let's for fun, why don't we just open this cartridge and see what the inside looks like. It just pops open. And here's the guts out of the cartridge. Not much to see. Just the yoke the needle rides on attached to a little crystal to produce the output voltage. Okay, I think I've decided I'm just going to bail on this and, and use my resources to fix things that are, shall we say, of better quality. Picked this up at the flea market for $15, and now that I look into it, I it probably paid about $14 too much for it. And my plan was to fix it if it could be fixed easily and flip it. Not for much money, but, you know, I always like to try to at least get my investment back out of stuff. However, I'm already into this 15 bucks. We've already had to hunt a speaker down for it. We're going to have to still do more work to the record changer. We'll be into it for about 30 bucks for one of these cartridges. And these jokers around my area, they expect you to give stuff to them. You know, I could advertise this for sale for 50 bucks and they'd have a heart attack. You know, they'll go out and spend hundreds of dollars for a new iPhone or something that they can send a text on, or they'll spend a hundred dollars on a meal at a fancy steakhouse, or, or they'll spend hundreds of dollars on a flat screen TV, but when it comes to something vintage, you can forget it. You know, they, they think you should give it to them, so knowing that fact, and this, since this is not something I really want to keep, why would I want to invest all that money and time into this thing only to have people make smart aleck comments about me wanting too much for it or whatever? I might as well junk it and use it for parts to fix something else. Mike could use the record changer and something else down the road. I have been known to do that. So there you go. You know, I hate... I like these videos to end on a happy note, but sometimes it's best if I post some videos showing the harsh reality of some of this stuff. Even some of the vintage stuff is sometimes not worth repairing. Okay, there you go. The late 70s concert hall record player that's going to be a no-go. Hate that it wasn't better, but it is what it is. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll try to have a success story for you next time.